and jump down again. You're kept isolated for a reason. It's control. So the way in which jobs have changed over time, some of you, even very skilled people. So think about very any, any skilled millennials. They're my favorite example of this. The people who have to live on this thing we've invented called the gig economy. Right, so the guy who works for you, right, or who brought us here tonight, is, what's his name again? Matthew. Matthew, is he here? He's outside, right? Matthew has four jobs. Four, right? Now, you can say, well, no wonder there's unemployment. Matthew's got all the jobs, right? <laughs> but the reason is none of them pay benefits. None of them give him a pension. And if he's going to pay for an apartment in a city and do the stuff he wants to do, he needs four jobs. Like, what? Huh? Now, you know, all of that happened. We, we weren't, were we responsible? I don't know. Maybe we were in some sense. We weren't paying attention. Now, what's making this happen? Well, partly it's technology. Partly it's property rights. Think about Uber. How many of you have enjoyed Uber? I love Uber. I love Uber because taxis are horrible. And the reason taxis are horrible is because it's all about monopoly control of the medallions. And the people who have the medallions bolt them onto shitty cars that never get cleaned, and they run them into the ground using immigrant labor usually as cheaply as possible, exploiting them ruthlessly. So in a sense, if you're actually into labor rights, you might like Uber. And that's a weird thought, right? But they don't get any benefits. Well, <laughs> trust me, neither is the guy from Somalia. That's not happening either, the guy in the cab. It's just that it's less visible. But there's a dark side to this. And here's a story with Uber that I heard. And I'm saying this is a story. I was not in the room, simply telling you it's a story. When they were doing the fundraising, they went around, you know, all the venture capital people and funds and stuff. And they said, you know, this is our presentation, this is what we're going to do, this is what the app does, it's going to destroy, the, it's basically disintermediating taxis, right? I mean, it's fantastic. And anyone who's had a bad taxi ride, they're like, yes, just give me this now, this is awesome, right? You mean you'll actually turn up at 6 a.m. when I need to go to the airport? I won't have to call four times, right? I mean, we've all been there, brilliant, right? And the guys getting the presentation, they said, well, you know, what's the share? What do you guys get and what does the drivers get? I think the drivers get 30%, we get 70%. And I was like, whoa, I mean, that's amazing because, you know, I mean, how, how much do you get the actual fare? He said, well, there's the fare, but then there's also this, and there's going to build this whole thing out. And he's like, oh, okay, fair enough. And then he said this, but we're going to take them down to 20. <laughs> well, why? Because we can. Now, at that point, the guy I knew in the room was like, thanks very much, we're not buying, right, and left. Or at least that's what he tells me. I bet he's invested up the wazoo, <laughs> right? <laughs> But in such a world, right, what are you doing? You're creating that world of Ricardian competition. Now, you say, well, Lyft's going to come in. Lyft's going to come in, and they'll give you better stuff, right? Come on, you don't have Lyft on your phone. It's bad enough setting up one account. You can't be bothered doing the other one. So, you know, our own laziness and our own lack of thought is creating the conditions in which the gig economy can flourish. And because it's happening to people who are younger than us, who are not our children, we care in the abstract. But how much do we really care? Because we benefit from the services. Think about airlines, right? I bet you don't know this one. Um, a lot of American airlines, not that I mentioned in a company, American Airlines, um, <laughs> will pay people only when they're in, in the air. So they get a flat rate allowance for staying on the ground, and you only get paid when you're in the air. What? I mean, you're a full-time employee of the company, right? Well, yeah, but that's why you can fly to Paris for 600 bucks, and you do. So, you know, what was once a solidarity that was very automatic has become a kind of culpability to generalize to others whose faces we never see. And that's why it's so easy to live with such inequality and such injustice.